Hello, and welcome to the Needs Languages. I'm really glad you joined me today. If you haven't yet, please do hit one of our subscribe buttons. On this channel, we dedicate this to personality, communication, belonging, conflict resolution, anything to do along those lines. And sometimes, a lot of times, we do talk about dark personalities. Today, I want to talk about the interview that happened about a week ago of Stefan Stearns' parents. Now, if you don't know who Stefan Stearns is, he is a person out in Florida who essayed a young girl and then took away her life. It's a very sad story. Now, I watched his parents get on, and what I found was interesting is his parents wanted to defend themselves. And this is a natural thing that most people want to defend themselves, especially when they're feeling attacked. However, this isn't always the wise thing to do. And the other thing I want to say is there's a couple of things I want to talk about regarding that. This is about Madeline. This isn't about them. This is also a place to have the ability to say, we've made some mistakes. We should have, as parents, gotten him help sooner. We didn't know how to work with him. And we thought we could handle him, and we didn't know how to handle him. Instead, it felt like they were saying, we're being picked on, and he's had this accident, and the accident caused it. That's just really what it felt like through that whole interview. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about Stefan and what I've observed from what I've heard from the parents, what I've seen, his movements. So what we do is we research personality and we research personality from a belonging perspective and what people need to belong in this world. And then we look at the time signature of that as well. And what I mean by that, is it high energy, is it low energy? And we figured out part of the reason he's struggling is because of his energy of signature. And that meant of where he was wanting to find out where he wanted to work. And part of that is he also wanted, it seemed like he wanted to do things opposite of his dad and his dad and him were battling in that. Now, if you'd like more information on the time signatures, we have a subscription model that talks about that, or you can just contact me and I have some coaching and um, consulting on that and we can go over that. Uh, but back to this. So that was part of the thing is there was this conflict between the two of them where I think his his dad was struggling with what he was wanting to do was thinking his, he thought, Stefan was like, I like this. Dad was saying, I don't like that. And they were not in agreement in alignment over what they both thought was, would be an okay career to go through. And so there was arguments going on there. The second thing I want to talk about is the accident that they kept referring to. And this is vital to understand. You see, I believe that the accident did play a factor, but not in the way that they're saying it play a factor. And I'm going to explain this to you. When people have traumatic things happen in their life, they may get stuck at that age. So, for example, if a three-year-old sees mommy and daddy get divorced and it's traumatic for them, there's a fracturing that happens that keeps them, part of them, that keeps them at three. If it's six years old, that same child sees daddy marry a new woman and that new woman is um, not getting along with that child, they may have another fracturing at six years old that is doing things to prevent them from moving on. So now they're stuck at three, six, and as every time they have a traumatic event happen, it gets them stuck at that area. Now you may go, what do you mean? Well, have you ever heard stories of your family talking about you know, well, grandma had this uh, brother who had an accident and died at this age and they got a new stepmom and they talk about that story over and over and over again when mom was six and this happened. Uh, that's when a fracturing happened. Mom never really grew up past six years old. And that's what I'm talking about. So I believe that that not so much about the brain damage. I believe he probably had a, a traumatic brain injury. 
But I believe that there had more to do with them being stuck at that age because of the way that the situation was handled around that and because he did not get the counseling he needed. Now, we also have to look at the age group of the um, of the parents. The parents are baby boomers and how many baby boomers were taught to get their kids the help they need. If the previous generation didn't do that, how do you expect this generation to do that? So we also have to look at if when Stefan Stearns started S. Amy Madeline. She was around seven. So what if Stefan Stearns, a part of him, saw Madeline as his girlfriend and saw Jen, that Jen was like his mom? I know that sounds warped and crazy, but if there's a fracturing there, that could have happened. Now, this needs to be studied more. This is very warped and because this is a really warped way of thinking. That is very, very concerning. How do you change that mindset? How do you start working with that fracturing? First of all, the person has to be vulnerable. And second of all, you have to go through some EMDR uh, reintegration with your, um, uh, to try and get your, to see yourself as an adult. That second. Uh, because that seven-year-old has to heal to be seen to see themselves as an adult. Now that still doesn't mean that what he did, what he did was he, what he did was wrong. I'm just going to tell you what he did was wrong. It's still wrong. Bottom line, he's an adult. Does not matter. It's still wrong. So the second thing I want to bring up that really kind of stuck with me in that interview is how the parents knew. Their son was in the same bed with Madeline, and they just told them in their home, you can't do that, but didn't do anything further than that. Okay, I understand this is your kid, but how could you not do more? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. It's almost like if you know your kid is drinking and driving in that moment and you're not doing anything to stop and you know they could kill somebody. Would you stop them? Would you say, I, I'm sorry, I've got to take your key, keys or would you just hand them the keys and say, go ahead, go drive? That is where we have to really look at the situation and go, no, I'm sorry, this is where we draw the line. You're going to have to spend the night or, okay, what's going on here? This isn't okay. And you have to do something about it. You see, as difficult as it is, that whole interview was about them, about how they were getting picked on by the media, about how they're being misread. Whether they're being misread or not, this isn't about them. This is about a young person who was victimized and hurt for four or five years of her life by people that she trusted. And that's what that should have been about. So as I say this, you may go, how would you respond in that situation? Well, first of all, the parents of Stefan had time to sit back and really think about things before they respond. Now, again, I have to give kudos to the um, people who did the interview. The forensic psychologist and his wife were fabulous doing this interview. They were great listeners, did a great job, absolutely great job. And the interview may not have gone long, on long if the, if the people, if Stephen Stern's parents would have re responded this way. If they would have said, you know, we are very sorry with what happened. And the we, have, we are, feel like people don't understand necessarily what's going on. We don't fully understand what's going on. This is a hard situation for everybody involved. 
but who the hardest situation for right now is the family in Madeline. And the focus needs to be on Madeline. And we want to take the time right now in this interview to really talk about Madeline. What kind of girl she was, how we enjoyed her being in our life, how we miss her. We want to take this interview to honor her life. That's the most important thing. You know what would have happened if they would have done that? They would have stopped focusing on themselves. They would have stopped justifying their parenting. And they wouldn't have been in the victim, predator, or rescuer triangle. I think that's where I want to end this with, on this discussion. You see, when we defend ourselves a lot of times, we end up in the victim, predator, or rescuer triangle. You know, I don't have to defend my decisions of how I raised my child. You don't have to defend your decisions of how you raise your children. Your children make the decisions they make when they're adults. And as parents, based on how we were raised growing up, we did what we did based on how we were raised, based on the belief systems, and we navigated it the way we, we knew how to navigate it. Bottom line, if we didn't understand that counseling was important because of a fracturing, we didn't know. We didn't understand. We didn't know. So we did what we knew what to do. And if our kids made these horrible choices as they became adults, that's their choice. They have to make the, they have to heal. They have adult decisions to make. There's more information out there than there ever has been. And I'm not responsible for what my adult child does. What I am responsible for is my reaction. What I am responsible for is when I see something that isn't that is hurting someone. What I'm responsible for is when I see something that's hurting someone, doing something about it. And when I mean doing something about it, it doesn't mean just stopping it in my house, especially if I know this is going on. It means stopping it and saying, this isn't okay. You need to not do this. It means having those crucial conversations. It does, no matter how hard they are. It means saying, you know, you can't do this in my house and you need to stop this. What's going on? And if he's in counseling, it means contacting his counselor and saying, hey, this is what's going on. He needs help. It's not living in fear. It's saying, get him the help he needs. So on that note, I hope that this was really informative. Um, and, you know, I think we need to give people, uh, I think we need to really understand where his parents are coming from. But I also think we need to start looking at ourselves and how we would handle that. I think we also need to look at when these things happen, that they need to be reported and not hidden and not think that we can handle it. We need to let authorities handle certain situations because we're not qualified for it. And I guess that's what I have to say. So on that note, I um, hope to see you next time. Bye for now.